Hey, you Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, why am I next to a tree all the time? Well, that's because I'm usually recording some vocals or something that the wind is going to ruin. Anyway, in this GarageBand Quick Jam, we're going to be looking at something that I've been putting off for a while, and I've been putting it off because I didn't really know how to use it. So I have learned it for you, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use the beat sequencer here in GarageBand. Let's go. Okay, let's jump into the beat sequencer by going to drums and tapping on beat sequencer. And from here, we can select the drum kit type by tapping in the top left and choosing by tapping on the drums here. And we have all our acoustic, our electronic, and our percussion to choose from. Let's grab an acoustic four on the floor drum kit. To use a different template, we tap on the templates here in the bottom left and we can choose any of these factory preset patterns. And if we tap another one, we will replace our pattern with the template. To turn our sequencer on and off, we use the power button here at the bottom. Green is on. And black is off. We can also randomize our beat pattern by pressing on the dice here in the bottom left. And now we get a random beat here in our sequencer. Let's jump into our pattern settings now. We tap on the eye icon here and we'll go into our pattern settings. Firstly, to change the length of our sequence, we can tap here and we can go anywhere from a 16 step pattern up to 64. At 16 steps, you can see we have a single screen here. And if we go back and change this to 64 steps, we have four separate screens here on the iPhone. So we go one, two, three, four along the top, and we can adjust each of these as part of one overall loop. Our next option is the step length, which can be anywhere from an eighth note to a 30 second note. Our playback mode here can be forward, reverse, ping pong, or random. Forward will be playing it forward, reverse plays the sequence backwards like this. Ping pong plays it forwards and then backwards like this. And if we want to get something very interesting, we can turn on random and we'll get a very different sounding sequence. Our final pattern setting here is swing. We can have anything from no swing up to 1 16th heavy swing. Now, if you want to create a blank template, we can go into our templates here, slide all the way to the left, and we'll tap on this original new pattern. To add in steps, we simply tap in the grid for each kit piece that we want. Let's create a basic kick, snare, and hi-hat pattern here now. To scroll up and down our pattern, we can tap on the kit pieces and scroll up and down. Make sure you don't do it in the middle, otherwise you'll get this. And you'll notice we can add additional kit pieces here. Let's add a crash symbol to our kit. To remove any step, we simply tap on the light to turn it off. And let's add in a crash symbol here instead. Over in the bottom right here, we have our step on and off, but we can also select our velocity function by tapping on velocity. And now to adjust the velocity of a particular step, we tap and hold, and then we can move this velocity slider up and down to set our velocity. And to change back to the default velocity, we double tap. And this helps us create a more realistic drum sound as we can vary how hard each drum or cymbal is hit. Next to velocity over here, we have an up arrow. If we tap on that, we have some other options here. We first of all have note repeat. Let's tap on that now. And this will control how many times the kit piece is hit for each particular step. Let's tap and hold on this hi-hat and we can drag all the way up to eight or all the way down to one note. Let's make this a three note hit and hear what this sounds like. So you can create some interesting patterns here by adding one, two, three, up to eight different hits per beat. We'll tap our up arrow again and go to the chance function. And this is a very cool feature that lets you decide the likelihood of each step actually being triggered. Let's go to our hi-hat triple hit again, and we'll tap on that. And let's lower this down to about 35% likelihood of being hit. Now let's play this back and see how often this will actually play. So you can see there that it's doing a random hit around about 35% of the time, about one in three, but it's not gonna be exact. It's going to be quite randomized because sometimes you get two in a row and sometimes it won't play for three or four to create a very random natural sort of feel. And our final option here is the loop start or end. So what we can do here is tap and drag our loops of individual kit pieces 
to create a looping effect. So now it will play all the way through for some of these, and these two that I've adjusted, it will just loop those, one, those two sequences over and over again. Let's play now. Now GarageBand treats the beat sequencer like its own instrument. So to record it, we need to actually record a track and play the beat sequencer. Let's hit the record button and do that now. And now to edit this beat, we tap on the track view, tap again, tap again, and go to edit. And from here, we can edit this beat like we would any other virtual instrument here in the piano roll. And if you need a refresher on how to edit, you can check out my editing quick jam videos. Finally, once we're happy with our pattern, we can actually save it as a custom pattern to use in the future. We tap on our templates in the bottom left here. We hit save give our pattern a name, and there is our new pattern under our custom tab here in our pattern templates. And that is it. How cool is the beat sequencer? I am very glad that I took the time to learn how to use it, and now you know the basics of getting started with beat sequencer. Get out there, create some beats, put these in your tracks, and have fun. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next video.